Now these English walnut logs came from a job site about four years ago. I actually milled a couple with my woodland mill sawmill back then when I first got them. But now they've been sitting a long time. They've got fungus growing out of the ends. I'm wondering if there's anything salvageable inside. Well, my neighbor stopped by for a minute to see what all the commotion was over here. But let's get some of these slabs off and see what we're looking at. Well, I'm going to run down and grab a belt sander and a random orbital sander. And uh, this, this is kind of neat looking. Got some, some splits in the middle, but that could probably be epoxied and maybe bow tied.
well i don't know guys this is uh there's some definitely some neat grain it's definitely doesn't it definitely doesn't look like walnut anymore let's put a little water on that and see what it does Wow, did that stuff just explode or what? I've got to say, I definitely think that this stuff is worth milling. Most of these other slabs aren't, don't have the splits in them like this one did. I got started kind of late in the day on this, but uh, I think I might tear into the rest of those next weekend and uh, get them, get them sliced into slabs so that we can save them. Well, I appreciate you guys watching. All right, hold on a minute. This video is not over yet. After seeing that grain last night, I've got to see what's in this piece that's got the the large crotch on this end. I'm not going to wait until next weekend. I'm going to open this thing up right now. All right, I went really slow through this to try and get as smooth a cut as possible. Wow. Like there's a little split in the wood there, but we're starting to get into the the crotch figure. Wow. Well, that's nice solid wood. I'm gonna flip this over 180, put this on the deck and take slabs from the other side. I think this piece is even better than the, uh, the one I cut yesterday.
Guys, this might be the most epic lumber I've ever cut on my wood miser. I'm going to take this down and spray it off and uh, we're gonna get a look at what this stuff is. I thought these logs were rotten, but they are, they're amazing. Let's go spray them off. All right, guys, are you ready for this? I love the character of the live edge on this stuff. Well guys, I'm glad I didn't wait to mill this up. This stuff is absolutely amazing. I made some thicker slabs out of this one because I'm picturing a coffee table. I've got some new metal fabrication tools that I can't wait to uh, make some legs out of steel for a coffee table that this stuff will be the top for, so. Well, hey there guys. I was just about to head to the freeway off ramp with my cardboard sign saying, we'll work for truck parts when my former boss called and said, he got a new couch and he wants two new end tables and a new coffee table to go with it. So I have got some English walnut here that I milled about two years ago. Now the two end tables are going to be 24 inches wide by 32 inches long. And I don't have any slabs that are wide enough to make a single slab live edge table, but I'm going to basically cut 65 inches out of this rip it down to 12 inches wide, cut it in half, join the two, do that twice for the end tables. The coffee table I believe is 32 by 48, so I'll probably have to make a center section, join three pieces together, but um, I think this is gonna look really awesome when it's done, so I gotta get started. I think before I rip this one down, I'm going to plane it smooth to make sure that when I join these two together, I don't have a big fold in the middle from the cut not being square. So I'm gonna plane this down first. Just kidding. I figured out my planer issue. I should have just used the uh, dust collector that came with it because it is bigger and it doesn't have the metal break to cause all the plug ups. Now, if you guys watched the video I did a couple weeks ago on this planer, I had it hooked up to my double bag dust extractor, which apparently is smaller than this one that came with it. So I've got it hooked up to this one. I think it's going to work better. I'm going to save a bunch of time by not having to router sled these slabs. I'm going to run them through this planer and it should work pretty good. That didn't work so good. 
duct tape. Let's try this again. I'll tell you that planer sure saved me a lot of time not having to use the router sled. Now right now I don't plan to fabricate legs uh, for these like I normally do. Um, I've asked my former boss to pick out a style he likes on Amazon and if I can't build them for cheaper, which I probably can't, uh, we'll go ahead and order matching legs for all three of these. But uh, right now, I'm going to lay out to square up the ends, and then we will start some uh, some sanding. Now you can see that this table doesn't have live edge coming all the way down because of the way the, the log um, ended up being cut. I have a, a cure for that. I'm also building a dining table for him and the same thing happened on the dining table. The, the live edge ran out before the end. So what I'm doing is I'm setting my track saw at about a 13 degree angle and I'm going to cut a bevel, a chamfer, across the bottom, just like I did on his uh, dining table. And that will help kind of tie the live edge into the manufactured edge. And I just think it, it adds a, a nice little touch. Um, I've seen uh, Cam on Blacktail Studio do that. He uses a giant router bit. I think if you make your first cut, though, with a track saw, and then you come back with your flat cut, you can get the same effect. Um, quite a bit easier so I am going to cut this and uh, show you what I'm talking about now thanks to the awesome job that the planer did I've only got some, some minor sanding to do. I'm going to start with 80 grit, knock everything down. I've got a couple of minor imperfections on this piece and the other uh, end table piece. 
The coffee table is going to require a little bit of epoxy, but I'm probably going to go ahead and, and give it a rough sanding first. But uh, yeah, I'm going to get on this one right now. Now I've got some checking and some imperfections in the bottom side of the table here. I'm going to try something new. I'm going to fill them with epoxy, but instead of using a liquid dye as I have in the past, I'm going to use uh, powdered graphite. From what I hear, this won't pull into the wood. If the uh, epoxy soaks into the wood, it won't take the graphite with it as it does with the uh, liquid dye. It'll end up staining black around your imperfections. So I'm going to try this graphite powder. I've never done it before. I don't know how much to add. But I'm just going to add slowly and go from there. Wow, that gives a really neat shimmery kind of black. I think that's going to look better than the, the black dye I've been using.